<laughs> finally starting to get the hang of these curriculum picks, but there's still some new picks that we're going to be using for the 23-24 school year. Hi, I'm Stacy with Kids Learning for Life, and next school year I will have a 5th grader, a 4th grader, and a 2nd grader. So the first new thing we're really going to be diving into this upcoming school year is IXL. I actually kind of t gave it a test run last year and just used it here and there. Um, and it's still not going to be our core curriculum, but it's definitely going to be supplemental. IXL is an online platform that has history, science, math, English, and even some Spanish. And it basically will give your kids some review or quizzes and have them master different skills. This is definitely different than some platforms where they give you some sort of path or learning sequence and you go through it. Um, but this allows them to kind of pick which activity they want to do or which skill they want to focus on or which one I tell them they're going to focus on and then they get to practice it. So I would use this a lot for review. One of the biggest critiques I have seen on different Facebook groups or um, any reviews on this product is that it is just kind of review. There isn't any learning. So you kind of have to hope that your kid already learned that topic to be able to do these lessons but they are slowly but surely fixing that. Even this year, they have added in, I think all of their kindergarten curriculum now has a video at the beginning of each little quiz so that your kiddos can watch and kind of be taught the concept. Uh, for math for my kiddos, they definitely already had that implemented for my fourth grader. I know I saw him watch a video before he went and did the quiz, but again, I was using it for more, hey, here's some extra fraction practice, or here is some extra, um, grammar practice and I would have them do those but it is really cool to see that at least there will kind of be that video component and they're adding more I think they added kindergarten and first grade this past year don't quote me but I do recall getting emails where they they've said that oh there's video lessons now for all of our kindergarten curriculum so they're definitely on the way to adding more of that in. So I am excited for that. So if you've been thinking about IXL and not sure, um, I do find that it's really nice to be able to just go pick the exact topic I want them to work on and then they can do that and then move on. Now let's move on to English language arts. For my fifth and fourth grader, they, last year they were doing literature studies and so we're gonna be continuing with that for their reading. So what I do for that is I have them pick a book and I've actually been utilizing the Ambleside Online Free Reads book list and having them pick one of those to read aloud to me. And they would read aloud and we do, you know, a chapter a day or whatever it may be. And then they will narrate to me after they read it and they will tell me about what they read. And then if I find any other activities or anything, I'll kind of throw that in, but it's not super planned. For my now first grader, soon to be second grader, he is working through the All About Reading Level 2. And so depending on how much of this we finish the rest of this school year and maybe a little bit over the summer, he may be moving into Level 3, but I think he'll probably still be finishing this up by the beginning of next school year. I absolutely love All About Reading. I've used it with all of my other boys. It just is so simple for me to teach. It's very laid out for me and it comes with everything you need to teach reading. Now, one thing that I've always known about is All About Reading has a companion called All About Spelling. I never really did the spelling program. Um, it was enough time and it took me forever to just try to get them to read. And so I was hoping that after they started reading, they would kind of, the spelling would just kind of follow. And I feel like for my middle child, that, that's kind of ringing true. But for my oldest, who was a super avid reader, and I don't know, I don't, I don't have exact studies, but I could have sworn, you know, I read headlines that if they're reading a lot, spelling will just come naturally. Well, that didn't happen with my oldest. So what I've actually done is I've started implementing all about spelling with all of my kiddos. So last year, my third and fourth grader were doing all about reading. I started at kind of the end of level one and they even moved into level two. And so we're still working through level two. I am going more quickly, like we're not doing it as slow. I'm just trying to get to those rules um, and help teach them that and get them to really understand some of these spelling concepts. I'm already seeing a huge difference. So for next year, for my fifth and fourth grader, um, I'm hoping that we'll kind of get through this during the summer. Um, this is kind of my main focus. So hopefully by next year we're starting level three. And then because I've seen such a huge improvement, I'm actually already starting um, my soon to be second grader with All About Spelling. So he'll probably still be working through level one by the time we get started next school year. But I've just found that even though, again, for my next year's fourth grader, he 
probably doesn't need as much spelling help because I don't know why it, kids are different and but my oldest really needed it so I'm like okay well if I'm gonna teach it to him I'm just gonna teach it to you as well and so then I'm bringing it all the way down to my second grader as well and just gonna start doing spelling all about spelling is super simple just like all about reading everything is laid out it's teaching me all the rules I mean there's words I know how to spell but I didn't know why they're spelled that way and this is teaching those rules so it's really interesting for me as well moving on to writing if you've followed this channel for any amount of time you'll know that this has always been the hardest thing for me to teach I don't know why writing is like I can write and I can do things but teaching it and getting them excited about it has been a struggle so I was utilizing IEW last year and um, for lots of different reasons it just wasn't working as well as I had hoped I thought that the videos would be great but it ended up the writing just took so long and I felt like it was overly structured again not in a bad way not that I would never not go back to it I just figured that my kiddos weren't ready for that such a structured approach they needed kind of the just just getting stuff down just having fun just being able to go oh I'm gonna write now and it's okay um, rather than trying to fight tooth and nail and I did see progress and growth and it still was fun for them they actually really liked the videos they thought um, the Andrew Poodle Poodlewa, that is the instructor in the videos was really funny and um, but because of how he was teaching it it was so different than anything else I'd ever seen before I had to kind of sit and watch the videos with them and that was defeating my whole purpose of getting the videos I was hoping it would be something more video led and then the kids could do it on their own um, but that wasn't the case so that was not working out for us super well so I did a little more research and I really wanted something open and go simple easy didn't make writing overly complicated and so I started trying out and I am liking the building writers series so this is from the handwriting without tears company and what um, I have my now fourth and third grader in the level E and so next year they will be moving up um, to the level F but because we started this just maybe a month ago they're they're hardly through it like as you can see there's still plenty in here for us to write but I just liked how it's all in here it's one book um, it gives it definitely walks them through things so if they're gonna talk about famous athletes it gives you lots of details and even gives you a sample sentence and then you they give you details and you have to create your sentence and then over here you're gonna write um, about all of them so this is going to kind of be like three different paragraphs that they're laying out for you and then you're going to put all of those into a full like paper so I really liked that again there's fun topics dinosaurs what kid doesn't love dinosaurs um, there's you know characters about a puppy and you know they talk about feelings and really getting them to think about their writing but in the same way it doesn't make it boring it's just very simple and easy and so my kids have been enjoying it it's something that I can have them implement even for like my younger kiddo um, this is for my now first grader again he will be moving up next year eventually to the level C but he's currently on level B um, it just has bigger words smaller sentences but kind of working on the same thing where again they give you sample of what they want it to look like or what they're expecting you to write and then like giving you sentence starters and then you eventually go on and you get to write your own thing so I just love how it kind of breaks it down for the kiddos and makes it not so intimidating lastly I have the kiddos do 20 minutes of daily reading next year I'm thinking for my fifth and fourth grader bumping that up to 30 and this is kind of like just a fun read I don't put a lot of parameters on what they read you know I always prefer if they pick up their most recent chapter book for their free reading but if they're gonna go to our like nonfiction section and just open up random encyclopedias you know those like DK books and learn about things that's fine as well I just want them to get used to having books around and, and reading things and just making it fun all right next up is math and since I've started this channel this has been the least interesting topic to talk about because I have not changed my math curriculum I have changed probably everything else several times uh, but math we have stayed very true to our primary mathematics next year my fifth grader will be moving into 5a my fourth grader will be moving into 4a and my second grader will be moving into 3a um just the way everything worked out I started all of my kindergartners on the level 1a of primary mathematics and my older two there were just more gaps again when they were younger I wasn't so because I knew they were technically on the book ahead 
I didn't really worry too much about the schedule. Um, but so they ended up finally like being on their current grade level. But with my kindergarten, with my youngest, he actually, because I was being more on a schedule as my older two grew up, he ended up continuing on that fast paced schedule and he's doing really well with it. I'm actually shocked. I was surprised that I didn't have to like slow down with him yet, but I'm sure there will be something maybe in this next year and he might not be right on um, the grade level above him, but we'll see. So that's why if you're wondering why the grade levels don't match up with the numbers, it's just because he started on 1A in kindergarten and finished 1A and then now is in 2A. And so we'll be moving on to 3A next year. One kind of hurdle I'm realizing is that this is fifth grade is the last year that primary mathematics actually has curriculum. I think that the newer version of primary mathematics might go to sixth grade. So I'll have to see if I want to continue with that or I just need to brainstorm and figure out, okay, what is going to be the next math that I'm going to be moving my kids into and start thinking about that and how I want to do that. So. Um, if you used primary mathematics and you found that something works and aligns really well with, you know, sixth, seventh, eighth and above, then please let me know in the comments because I'm definitely going to be researching this year, trying to figure out what we're going to move on to next. And I'm hoping to find something that I don't have to switch around because math is one of the hardest things I've seen that is really hard for people to switch because all the different math programs are so different. So again, if you've used something after primary mathematics that seemed to flow well and kind of have a similar scope and sequence, I'd be really interested to know what you used. Next up is history. And if you saw my mid-year review, you'll know that I switched over to utilizing Ambleside Online for history. Jenny has used Ambleside Online for several years now, and I've always had an interest in it in the living books. And so I finally gave it a try. We do a lot of history in the car. So I rely heavily on audiobooks. I love that LibriVox is an audiobook app that provides free audiobooks. And then I utilize Hoopla through my library and you can get so many checkouts per month. So between those two things, I find that I'm able to get most of what I need through, um, the, through the Ambleside Online book lists. Now, if you don't know what Ambleside Online is, it is a free book list and schedule and then you just have to find all the books and then to create like a full curriculum. It goes from you know, pre-reading all the way through 12th grade. And I will put a link to that below as well. And what I did this year was I just went and printed out the schedule and then I deleted out the sections I didn't want. Like again, I'm kind of this past year just focused on history and a little bit of science and even some of the literature. So as I started getting into Ambleside Online, I've noticed I've started putting more and more in. Um, so yes, I am going to be utilizing literature audiobooks of whatever is in the schedule. So we just read The Wind in the Willows and we are going to be reading Robin Hood soon. And so next year, I'm really excited for some of those books. So I just printed out the schedule and I noticed there's a lot more things that I kept in this year. So we will be doing history. And so history um, is still our island story and then also has this country of ours. So kind of going with the story of America, which will tie in perfectly with my fifth graders history curriculum. This year we focused a lot on California and then, you know, along with the Ambleside online readings. And then so next year, even my fourth grader will join us because he already learned a lot about California and missions and Native Americans and everything. But then next year, we're going to be moving into US history. When I started Ambleside Online kind of in the middle of this year, I started with a super modified year one. I just grabbed, I think, the Our Island story and maybe one other thing. Oh, and the 50 Famous Stories Retold. And so I had the kids do that. And that's kind of how I dipped my toe in to see if I would like it. And then now we're, I think we're almost through term two of the Ambleside Online readings. Again, super modified. I kind of picked what I wanted. We're not reading everything. There were a few things I wanted to read, but I couldn't find an audiobook for. Um, again, we're doing history and Ambleside Online in the car. So if it's not in the audiobook form, I don't think I'm going to have enough time to sit down and kind of read it aloud. Um, I do like to save my reading aloud times for just kind of fun books. Like right now, um, we're doing Wing Feather Saga. And so we'll probably continue that next year. I know we took a pause in Harry Potter. I'll see if they want us to do that. There's lots of books. There's so many books I want to read um, with my kiddos as kind of family time. So for Ambleside Online, I utilize those in the car. And so if it's not an audiobook, it probably didn't make my list of what we're covering each year. 
the next school year we'll be hopping into Ambleside online year three again a super modified version based on um, what I want to focus on and then what I'm able to find audiobooks for so I love history I love the science readings and we love the literature as well and if we have extra time I'm thinking about just taking the free read section that they give a list of books and just putting those on and listening to those as a family as well for science as I mentioned we will get some science in our Ambleside online readings we are also going to continue with our crunch lab subscription um, again we're we got this in like a October, November timeframe, so it, it will last a couple months in the next school year. Um, depending on if he has a year two, I have not decided if we're going to do that yet. But these have been super fun. The boys love them. We do sometimes like collect like three months at a time and then do them all over a weekend. Um, so we don't necessarily do them month to month, but again, it's really fun when we have the time and we can just sit down, watch the videos, and have the kids build. Next year, we will also be continuing our 4-H, so that is where the boys get to pick different projects. This year, um, my younger two were doing the Nigerian Dwarf projects, and my oldest was doing the Swine Project. So taking care of the animals, knowing how to care for them, knowing, you know, if they're sick. We did have our pig get sick, and my son had to deal with how to make it better and still get it up to weight and do everything and train it and all of that stuff. So it's been really, really interesting for us this year. And so we're gonna continue with that next year. And then a lot of our science, we're gonna be continuing on with kind of our student led approach. So if you know, I've kind of ditched science curriculums altogether. And I really want the goal for my kiddos is to, if they have a question, be motivated to go find the answer for it, whether they're coming and asking me, whether we're searching together, whether they ask to get onto the computer and try to do some research about it. But really what I want them to do is ask and then find answers for their questions. Um, my kids have so many questions and of course they always come up in the car and when I can't like look it up, even if it's a really interesting question. So I always just say, hey, remind me when we get home and we'll look that up. And so it's maybe 50-50 shot whether we remember or not. But that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for them to question the world and then be able to find the answers. So we did a little bit of that, of their own research, and then we utilize lots of YouTube videos when they have questions, and that has been a lot of fun for us. So that gets us through all of our core curriculum. So as far as extracurriculars, things I've used in the past, like Typing Club, Homeschool Spanish Academy, Simply Piano, I'm really gonna take the summer to reevaluate what exactly we're gonna use next school year. So I absolutely love all the programs we've been using. There's nothing wrong with the actual program for what it is, is I'm just trying to figure out like for extracurriculars, if my kiddos wanna do piano, are they, do they wanna get lessons from an instructor? But there's just all these different things that I'm realizing, are they just doing it to do it or do they actually want to ex start to try to excel at it? Because they're at this age where, you know, they've been exposed to it, but now what do they want to do with that? Do they want to keep learning piano or maybe they want to learn something else? So we're going to use the summer to where I can chat with the boys and really figure out what extracurriculars they want to do and really utilize our time well in that um, aspect and just see what they're interested in. If you're wondering what YouTube channels I like to use when we are doing science, I'll leave a link to a video over here of my favorite YouTube channels that cover the STEM topics. And next week, Jenny will have her curriculum review up, so be sure to check back here and I'll link it up when her video goes live. See you next time and happy homeschooling.